doing another reaction. Uh, today we're reacting to a top 10 from uh, Watch Mojo's channel. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting closer and closer to Halloween. Um, so I wanted to post some uh, some stuff for Halloween, some more things. Uh, horror films are some of my favorite uh, type of films. So it's, it's my top favorite genre. So I'm always you know trying to check out horror films and stuff like that. Um, this is Watch Mojo's top 10 horror movies that have aged well. So I'm curious to see what they what they pick because it's going to be older movies, and I still have some older films, <laughs> some films made back in the uh, 80s, 70s, and stuff like that that I own as far as DVDs and VHSs and so goes. And yes, I still have VHS tapes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, uh, there, I, I believe there's uh, quite a few that have aged well that I still enjoy to this day. Um, so let's go ahead and check out uh, Watch Mojo's uh, top 10 of which ones they think that have aged well. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movies that have aged well. Um, Mr. 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 Arbogast, I wouldn't describe it. I think I've. Psycho. I think I've talked to you all I want to. For this list, I don't think I'm on Psycho. transcended their era thanks to like, Watch Mojo. Iconic performances and innovative filmmaking techniques. There will be some spoilers ahead, so a spoiler warning is in effect. Do you think these movies are I don't own Jaws as my I only to see... <laughs> I don't see Jaws as a horror film, but you can... Number 10, you Psycho. Classify it Alfred well. Hitchcock is one of the greatest directors in film history, and he crafted what could be the greatest horror movie ever made. Would you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Even the fact that its iconic twists are well known does not distract from the movie's overall quality. The plot is superbly structured and it remains innovative and unorthodox. Its exploration of human evil remains fascinating and of course the performances remain uniformly excellent across the board. Now after the murder Norman returned as if from a deep sleep and like a dutiful son covered up all traces of the crime he was convinced his mother had committed. Anthony Perkins gives one of the all-time best villain performances, and Norman Bates remains a tantalizing bad guy. Even the black and white photography fails to date the movie. Instead, it adds to the foreboding atmosphere. All told, Psycho is as mesmerizing today as it was in 1960, which is really saying something. She just goes yep. a little mad sometimes. I can agree. You still enjoy Psycho. Number 9, Jaws. While only in his late 20s, Steven Spielberg crafted the blockbuster to end all blockbusters. I'll catch this bird for you, but it ain't gonna be easy. It's a bad fish. I like going down the pond chasing bluegills or tommy cats. The concept of Jaws is beautifully simple. A hungry shark is terrorizing a popular tourist beach, and the local police chief hopes to stop it. The simplicity has allowed Jaws to remain universal. People still mm -hmm. like beaches, and they're still scared of sharks. Mm -hmm. Shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Spielberg's filmmaking has also transcended the generation, as he employs a less is more approach that suggests rather than shows. But even when it does come to the show, Spielberg pulls it off in magnificent fashion with some mechanical sharks. Nobody does summer blockbusters quite like Spielberg. Yeah, they did an excellent job in editing. I'm, I'm glad they paid attention to how it would look. Um, as far as with just you can tell, it's fake. dollars and a cheap Captain Kirk mask, John Carpenter changed the very trajectory of movie history. You know, it's Halloween. 
I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. And if this movie didn't certify him as an all-timer, then The Thing certainly did. Like Jaws, Halloween has a very simple premise that remains both possible and horrifying to this day. Ladies and gentlemen, two films are playing a very, very nice it. Halloween did a nice film. I haven't seen it, so I can't give you a good answer. Carpenter transcends his tiny budget and does a lot with little, like employing the then revolutionary technique of the panaglide allowing him to shoot smooth shots from Michael's point of view. And yes, the silent Michael Myers is every bit as creepy today as he was in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death. Number seven, an American werewolf in London. One of my favorites. Yes, sir? A naked American man stole my balloon. What? Suffice to say, this is not what people were expecting from director John Landis after Animal House and the Blues Brothers. In fact, Landis had this idea long before he directed those two films, having written the script back in the late 60s. His passion for the project is clearly evident. It's both horrifying and hilarious, employing that famous Landis charm while also scaring the pants of viewers with some truly mesmerizing special effects. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, one of the best transformations uh, in the world of movie. Uh, they did such an excellent and job with that. Speaking of the Oscar-winning effects, and practical effects at that, practical effects and extraordinarily disgusting today. Artist Rick Baker is an like under hardly anyone artist, continues to do practical effects so well. Can attest to that. that everyone oh. just. Just because it's cheaper to go with visual effects. You created the Thank you. Number six, Scream. The slasher genre owes a major debt to Scream. Did you make your popcorn? Uh-huh. I don't make popcorn. Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. The movie gave a much needed jolt to the dying genre thanks to a terrifically structured plot, an iconic villain, or two, and fresh tongue-in-cheek humour that satirised the genre with knowing winks to the audience. The movie's famous metatone still works well, even though it inspired dozens of copycats throughout the years. Oh, mm. do you want to play Psycho Killer? Yeah. Can I What's crazy? Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's Director, no, writer. No, please don't me Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. He comes up with some good is excellent. The famous twist of having two killers is still interesting, and best of all, that opening sequence still goes hard. Many movies have tried to do what Scream did, including in its many sequels, but none have quite captured that bottled magic. That's the beauty of it all. Simplicity. Besides, if it gets too complicated, you lose your target audience. Number five, The Blair Witch Project. The entire found footage genre was popularized hmm. thanks to The Blair Witch Project. You look a little blurry, man. Let me zoom out on you. And it's hard to copy Blair Witch and keep that like whole thing going. And like Scream, its countless imitators yeah. have been largely unable to reach its cultural shattering heights. Regardless of what you personally think of the Blair Witch Project, there's no denying A, its legacy, mm -hmm. and B, how well it's aged. Simplicity is the key here. We never see the titular witch, so things like visual effects haven't had the chance to age. I'm scared to close my eyes. <laughs> Furthermore, the found footage really, giving yeah, well, say, push that found footage, footage could genre, just as easily have come from a like smartphone man. instead of a handheld camera. And it has allowed this little movie from 1999 to transcend the major technological leaps that have occurred since its release. We walked for 15 hours today. We ended up in the same place. There's no one here to help you. That's your motivation. Number four, Rosemary's Baby. While featuring satanic cults and the spawn of the devil, Rosemary's Baby is really about the experience of protagonist Rosemary Woodhouse. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Satan is his father, 
and his name is Adrian. He shall overthrow the mighty and lay waste their temples. He shall redeem the despised and wreak vengeance in the name of the burned and the tortured. Hail Adrian! Hail Adrian! The movie deals with many still present themes regarding women's liberation and personal freedoms. Rosemary is constantly gaslit and told what to do, and those around her don't have her best interest at heart. I don't know. Sometimes I think they're too friendly and helpful. Her agency is constantly stolen by those who want something from her, including her own husband. Of course, the movie also works extraordinarily well as a straightforward horror movie about creepy devil worship. Filled with fantastic performances and a palpable sense of paranoia and impending doom, Rosemary's Baby is a timeless classic of the genre. What have you done to it? What have you, have you done to its eyes? Number 3. Alien this movie has the same premise as countless B-movies. An alien stalks the inhabitants of a spaceship and cuts them down one by one. Perfect organism. It's structural perfection, isn't it? Extremely diverse, But thanks to director Ridley Scott and his team of talented filmmakers, Alien far transcends its B-movie premise. The alien mm -hmm. itself is a timeless creature, both in physical design and crazy with it's a predator, and it wants to hunt. What they say it was done to try to, you know, film this, time. and what the actors had to go through. Oh man! The movie is also a masterpiece of visual design, featuring some spectacular sets, still convincing visual effects, and the nightmarish concoctions of artist H. R. Geiger. There is absolutely zero movie. indication that this movie was made in the late 70s. Kane, Lambert, Parker, Brett, Ash, and Captain Dallas are dead. Number two, Night of the Living Dead. There's just something about little known directors working on shoestring budgets that generates timeless masterpieces. They're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> Stop it, you're ignorant. <laughs> Nights I still quote this. This is sad part. I still quote this movie. Phrase, but it also remains one of the That's the part I always quote. The genre's history. The on-screen violence is shockingly graphic and macabre, and we can only imagine the terror it inspired in 1968. At this hour, we repeat. These are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. And while Romero would later expand his post-apocalyptic vision, we love the smaller scale of so the movie. So upset. Like, why is all these zombies coming to this spot? Realistic. Even out of all the places they can go to. Countless imitators, Night of the Living Dead has never been matched. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Number one, The Shining. Stanley Kubrick is considered one of the greatest directors ever for a reason. But you are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. His seminal horror film is an undisputed classic, transcending <laughs> not only years, but also the very haunted house <laughs> subgenre to which it belongs. The film perfectly toes the line between surreal paranormal scares and grounded horror regarding the loss of sanity. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Jack Nicholson sells his character's descent with remarkable skill. It is and such a nice job. Plays off him tremendously. The movie's ambiguities also remain tantalizing, having generated decades worth of interesting debate and discussion. The Shining can be viewed through an academic lens or simply as a straightforward haunted house thriller. Either way, it's a masterpiece, and it's remained as such for decades. And I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. All right. So that was uh, the ten, top ten horror movies that have aged well. Um, I think for me, I would have shuffled this around. Uh, <laughs> like some things would be uh, more in the back than there was in the front, and some would have been closer to the front. Like I would have had some things switch around, but it still wasn't a bad list whatsoever. Um, I agree. 
to majority all of them being on the list um, for the top 10 um, that have aged well. So, hey, they, uh, there's some, and I was like, I wish they made it on this list. Um, one of them being Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that one uh, is one of my favorites um, by Wes Craven. Well, it is my favorite film, to tell you the truth. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is my favorite film. Uh, but, not a lot of people agree. <laughs> but uh, that's one I would have definitely put on the list just because it is my favorite. But, you know. <laughs> Well, uh, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments below. Uh, what films didn't make it on the list that you would have probably put on there. Uh, if you like this uh, video, please put a like on the video. If you'd like to subscribe, if this is more of my videos, please do. Thank you all so much for jumping on. Give me a try. I really do appreciate it. Please do take care of yourselves and each other. Peace, geekdom.